The genesis of the F-102 traces back to the early 1950s. As the Cold War intensified, the U.S. Air Force recognized the need for a new generation of interceptors to counter the rapidly advancing Soviet bomber fleet. Convair, with its experience in jet and delta-winged aircraft, took on the challenge. The initial designs, however, faced aerodynamic challenges, especially when transitioning to supersonic speeds. Extensive wind tunnel tests revealed issues with transonic drag, a problem that threatened the interceptor's very purpose. But innovation was on the horizon. Enter Richard Whitcomb, an aerodynamicist who introduced the area rule concept. This principle reshaped the F-102, leading to its distinctive wasp waist or coke bottle design, which drastically reduced drag and allowed the aircraft to achieve its supersonic goals. With these modifications, the Delta Dagger took to the skies, marking the beginning of a new era in interceptor technology. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger evolved over its operational life, leading to the development of several distinct models, each with its own set of enhancements and roles. The YF-102 was the initial prototype, paving the way for the Delta Dagger's journey. However, it faced challenges in achieving the desired performance, leading to significant design changes. The F-102A was the first production model, benefiting from the area rule design. It became the mainstay of the U.S. Air Force's interceptor fleet, equipped with the Pratt and Whitney J-57 P-23 turbojet and advanced avionics. For training purposes, the TF-102A was introduced. Distinctive for its side-by-side -side seating arrangement, it allowed trainee pilots to familiarize themselves with the aircraft's systems under the guidance of an instructor. The F-102B was an advanced derivative, designed with even more powerful engines and sophisticated avionics. However, its improvements were so significant that it eventually became its own aircraft, known as the F-106 Delta Dart. Each model of the F-102 was a testament to the continuous pursuit of excellence, adapting to the ever-evolving demands of aerial warfare during the Cold War. The Delta Dagger's design was a marvel of its time, blending aerodynamics, engineering, and innovation. The most striking feature was its Delta Wing, a triangular shape that allowed for higher speeds and better high-altitude performance. The absence of horizontal tail surfaces relied solely on the delta wing for stability and control. The wasp waist, or coke bottle shape, inspired by the area rule concept, reduced drag at transonic speeds. The nose housed the advanced MG-10 fire control radar, which could detect and track enemy aircraft from a distance. The cockpit was designed with ergonomics in mind, ensuring pilots could react swiftly in high-pressure situations. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger, while renowned for its aerodynamic design and speed, was, at its core, an interceptor. Its armament evolved over its operational life to ensure it remained at the forefront of air defense. One of the F-102's distinctive features was its internal weapons bay, which reduced drag and allowed it to maintain its sleek profile. In its initial configurations, the F-102 was armed with 24 unguided 2.75-inch Mighty Mouse FFAR rockets. These rockets were housed in retractable trays, providing a rapid salvo against enemy bomber formations. As aerial warfare evolved and the need for guided munitions became evident, the F-102 underwent a significant weapons upgrade. The Mighty Mouse rockets made way for the AIM-4 Falcon missiles. The Falcon came in different variants, including infrared and radar-guided versions offering the F-102 a versatile air-to-air -air capability. One of the most notable and controversial additions to the F-102's arsenal was the AIM-26 Nuclear Falcon. Designed to release a nuclear blast in the midst of enemy bomber formations, it was a reflection of the high stakes of the Cold War. While it added a formidable punch to the F-102's armament, the use of such a weapon came with significant strategic implications. As the F-102 continued its service, there were considerations for further armament enhancements, including the possibility of equipping it with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. However, by the time these considerations came into play, the F-102 was being phased out in favor of more advanced interceptors. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger, with its sleek design, was a blend of advanced engineering and aerodynamic innovation. Let's delve deeper into the technical intricacies that define this interceptor. With a length of 68 feet 4 inches and a wingspan of 38 feet 1 inch, the F-102's size was both imposing and purposeful. Its height, standing at 21 feet 2 inches, further emphasized its stature on the tarmac. 
The engine was the heart of the F-102. The initial prototypes, the YF-102, were powered by the Pratt & Whitney XJ 57P11 turbojet. However, this engine fell short in propelling the aircraft to its desired supersonic speeds in level flight. Recognizing the need for more thrust, the redesigned F-102A was equipped with the more potent Pratt & Whitney J57 P23 turbojet. This engine, combined with aerodynamic enhancements, ensured the F-102A met its performance benchmarks, achieving speeds up to Mach 1.25 or approximately 825 miles per hour. In terms of altitude, the F-102 showcased its prowess by reaching a service ceiling of 53,400 feet. And with a range of 1,350 miles, it was primed to defend vast stretches of airspace. From its engine to its armaments, every specification of the F-102 Delta Dagger was meticulously chosen, ensuring it stood as a beacon of interceptor technology during the Cold War. Hey there! I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching and supporting this channel. You're amazing. I'd like to introduce you to Super Thanks. Your Super Thanks donation not only helps me create more awesome content, but also gets highlighted in the comments section. Just click on the Thanks button below this video and leave a small tip in your local currency. Let's grow together and thank you for being a super supporter. Now back to the video. The Convair F-102 Delta Dagger's operational history spans critical moments during the Cold War era. After its introduction in 1956, the F-102 became a cornerstone of U.S. air defenses. In Vietnam, the F-102 provided air defense for U.S. bases and escorted B-52 bombers. Throughout the Cold War, the F-102's primary mission was interception. During the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, F-102s patrolled the skies, ready for interception. Pilots of the F-102 constantly honed their skills in rigorous training exercises. By the late 1960s and early 1970s, the F-102 was gradually replaced by newer interceptors. The Cold War era saw the development of several interceptors, each with its unique strengths. Let's see how the F-102 stacked up against its contemporaries. The Soviet MiG-21 was one of the primary adversaries the F-102 was designed to counter. While the MiG-21 boasted impressive agility and speed, the F-102 had the advantage of superior radar and missile systems, allowing for beyond visual range engagements. Britain's English Electric Lightning was another contemporary, known for its incredible climb rate and high-altitude performance. While the Lightning excelled in vertical maneuvers, the F-102's Delta Wing design gave it an edge in sustained high-speed flight. The American F-104 Starfighter, often called the Missile with a Man in It, was another interceptor of the era. While the F-104 had a higher top speed, the F-102's internal weapons bay and advanced radar made it a more specialized interceptor. While the F-102 Delta Dagger was primarily an emblem of American air defense, its wings spread beyond U.S. borders, serving in the air forces of other nations. Greece was one of the international operators of the F-102. The Hellenic Air Force acquired the Delta Dagger in the 1970s, where it bolstered their air defense capabilities. Turkey also welcomed the F-102 into its fleet. The Turkish Air Force utilized the interceptor as a part of its strategic defense ensuring the nation's airspace remained secure during the tense years of the Cold War. 